Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Drones are nothing new, but what we think as drones are usually in the sky or on land. There are, of course, drones built to move over the surface of water. But how about underwater drones? Did you know that the US Navy is testing a brand new underwater drone? In history, the closest we have come to an underwater drone in the 20th century was when the US Navy developed the Curve, cable-controlled underwater recovery vehicle in the 1960s. Designed to salvage torpedoes and other objects from the ocean floor, the original Curve represented a major technological development in underwater exploration and recovery. However, it was still connected by a cable. Underwater unmanned vehicles, UUVs, are meant to perform underwater tasks where humans cannot go. The manta ray, for example, represents the latest technology for the US Navy. Developed by the Naval Research Laboratory of the US Navy, the Manta Ray UUV is a long endurance, large displacement system appropriate for oceanographic study, mine countermeasures, and other naval uses. The Manta Ray is built to run at depths of up to 11,000 feet and has a range of over 6,000 nautical miles. Other UUVs are also used to do oceanographic research. For thorough oceanographic research, vessels such as the NATO Research Vessel, NRV Alliance, use unmanned underwater vehicles such as the REMIS, Remote Environmental Monitoring Units. From the vessel, these UUVs run independently to collect a wealth of data from the maritime environment. What's that noise right here? Looks at the, some features associated with each of the contacts. With sophisticated sensors, Remus vehicles record seabed maps, temperature, salinity, chemical data, and high resolution pictures. Diving to great depths and spanning great distances, they follow real-time commands or pre-programmed paths. Underwater geological formations, marine habitats, and ocean currents are among the subjects this data collection clarifies. Going north and picking up the arc. Yeah, the arc is actual data. Right, that's a good it's, way to it's put it. based on data. Following missions, the UUVs return to the Alliance, where the gathered data is downloaded and examined to offer priceless insights into oceanographic events and support scientific understanding and naval operations. Other UUVs are used to find underwater mines. Using the Mark 18 Mod 2 Kingfish unmanned underwater vehicle, the US Navy detects and recognizes sea mines, therefore improving naval mine countermeasures. Yeah. 
High-density side-scan sonar aboard the Kingfish produces finely detailed images of the seabed, which lets operators find abnormalities suggestive of mines. The Kingfish UUV independently follows pre-programmed paths and quickly scans vast areas. Its sophisticated navigation technologies guarantee exact coverage, including inertial and GPS navigation. Operators receive the acquired sonar data for examination and advanced software aids in classifying possible hazards. The Kingfish enables the Navy to locate and neutralize mines securely by drawing up thorough and accurate underwater maps, ensuring safe maritime operations and protecting naval and commercial boats from underwater hazards. From machines to mammals, Train dolphins and sea lions in the U.S. Navy Marine Mammal Program, an MMP, find sea mines using sonar devices strapped to them. Dolphins can precisely identify mines by releasing sound waves from their sophisticated echolocation that bounces off objects. Dolphins are taught to search locations where they generate sonar clicks and listen for returning echoes throughout operations, therefore enabling them to recognize things resembling mines. With their keen underwater vision, Sea lions enhance this capability of the dolphins by recovering things attached by the dolphins using a specific retrieving tool. From one kind of seal to another, U.S. Navy Special Forces are known as SEALs, sea, air, and land teams and they use a swimmer delivery vehicle, SDV, as one way to achieve their objectives underwater. Launched from dry deck shelters, DDS, on the SSGN variant of Ohio-class submarines, U.S. Navy SEALs deploy swimmer delivery vehicles for covert operations and reconnaissance trips. The dry deck shelter is pressurized so that it keeps the seals dry while preparing and launching the SDV. Launched, the SDV can carry the seals underwater to their target so they may complete tasks, including reconnaissance, sabotage, or other operations. The SDV can be left on the seabed, and when the seals are done, they simply return to the vehicle. Unlike surface vessels, the enemy cannot easily discover the SDV. However, there is a newer, better version of the SDV. The new JFD SEAL Carrier Mark II 
is a cutting-edge submersible vehicle developed for specialized missions. It can move at 30 knots in surface mode, allowing for quick transit for covert missions. This flexible vehicle also has semi-submerged and fully submerged modes, which enhances its stealth capabilities. In semi-submerged mode, the SEAL Carrier Mark II lowers its surface profile, making it more difficult to detect while maintaining speed. When totally underwater, it functions quietly, avoiding radar and sonar detection. The craft is outfitted with cutting-edge navigation and communication systems, which ensure exact maneuverability and synchronization. Its strong design supports SEAL teams and their equipment, allowing for fast insertion and extraction in difficult areas and increasing operational flexibility and effectiveness. The U.S. Marine Corps takes a more direct approach to amphibious assault operations. The Assault Amphibious Vehicle, AAV, is designated as the AAVP-7A1 and is used to transport Marines from the assault ship to the shore. These vehicles weigh 64,000 pounds and stay afloat by displacing more water than their weight. AAVs deploy MEUs, Marine Expeditionary Units, from the well decks of amphibious assault ships. Each AAV carries 21 Marines to the beach, where smoke screens cover the final part of their assault. The AAV is armed with a 50 caliber heavy machine gun and a Mark 19 automatic grenade launcher. AAVs are old systems and require routine and non-routine maintenance. Major maintenance on an assault amphibious vehicle entails extensive procedures such as replacing the gearbox. This procedure includes emptying transmission fluid, disconnecting the transmission system, and removing the old gearbox. The replacement gearbox is then mounted, linked, and secured. These types of repairs can be carried out routinely in amphibious assault ships. From warfare to oceanographic surveys, Unmanned underwater vehicles have come a long way. Swimmer delivery vehicles are exciting covert machines that get special forces where they need to be, and sea mammals even help us locate sea mines. Nothing beats the straightforward assault of a Marine Expeditionary Unit attacking a beach objective in force.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.